Hi, my name is Bob Dwyer. I'm a member of the Massachusetts Liberty Preservation Association. We're a group of concerned citizens of Massachusetts that are trying to protect the liberties uh, based on the constitutional principles that our founding fathers laid down for us over 200 years ago. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about a very serious issue that's coming up this fall is, uh, is the pandemic uh, hype that we've all been seeing on the, on the news uh, about the swine flu. Um, what, what I'm here to talk to you about is, uh, is specifically a bill that passed the Senate back in April and the bill number is Senate Bill S-2028 and it deals with a pandemic preparedness uh, which would be uh, the bill gives the power of the governor to declare a state of emergency and he, he gives the uh, authority over to a health commission or appointed position and what, what uh, it allows him to do is to identify portions of the population that he sees that would need to be vaccinated or quarantined and what it does is it, it, it allows for forced vaccinations uh, the authorities could come to your house, say, uh, we feel that you need to get one of these uh, swine flu vaccines, and if you refuse to take the vaccine, they can take you out of your property, quarantine you in an undisclosed location, seize your property, search through all your property, and even if they decide that it's a health risk, public health risk, they can destroy your property. And there's absolutely no, no mention for compensation once they've destroyed or taken any part of your property. They can also um, uh, put you in prison for up to, up to six months with up to a thousand dollar a day fine. This is a very bad piece of legislation. I think, I think if you, uh, you just think it through, uh, the people that, that are going to be forced to apply this, this plan, uh, if you go to Mass Cops, uh, website, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of them that say that this is really a bad plan. The, the police don't want to have to go into people's homes. Some people are going to fight this. Some people are even going to uh, apply the Second Amendment to protect their property. So th this is a really bad situation. Um, as we uh, just just to go back to the the source of this bill, um, this bill was sponsored and introduced by Senator Richard T. Moore from the Western Norfolk District. His hometown is Uxbridge, Massachusetts, and he's the key sponsor of the bill. Um, and uh, we had to go, we felt the need to go talk to the senator. Uh, so immediately after we found out about this bill, we found that uh, after it passed the Senate unanimously, well, we found that he had a coffee hour down in his hometown in Uxbridge. So three of us uh, members of the Mass LPA went and spoke with the senator. I asked the senator uh, directly, I said, you know, this bill violates our constitutional rights. And his response to me was, well, what are you, an attorney? I said, well, you know, I don't have to be an attorney to understand the simplicity in, in the, uh, the Constitution, how it protects my rights. And, and then he turned back to me and I said, well, well Senator, didn't you take an oath to uh, defend the Constitution? And his response was quite shocking. He said, oh, that old thing? When was it written again? 1800, 83, 89? I don't know. Well, I know what I know when it was. It was actually the 1700s. He not only didn't get the right century right, but he didn't even pay it lip service like most politicians do today. They don't really consider the Constitution as relevant anymore, which is a big concern to us and the Mass LPA. So what we want to do is try to. Uh, try to educate the public about uh, the, the uh, principles of the Constitution. And we also want to go after the, the Senator Moore uh, because of uh, his violations to his oath. Uh, ultimately, he's really he's guilty of treason for violating his oath. So what we've done is we, we've set up a, uh, a protest in his district on September 12th, right in front of his district office, 123 Main Street in Uxbridge, September 12th, between 12 and 5. We're going to be uh, reaching out to his constituents, trying to a educate them as to why the senator uh, is not protecting their rights. And we're going to have petitions for them to sign. And then we're going to take those petitions to the state reps in his senatorial district and get them to move forward with a, an impeachment proceedings. Um, 
Uh, so, so this man's—he's a, a very bad senator, and and he's not—he's not there to. Uh, well, if the people that elected him should no, need to know that he's not there to protect their rights. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about what's in uh, S2028 and these forced vaccines. Um, you know, this fall, you, you're going to find that when your kids start school, that uh, they're probably going to come home with a with a consent form for you to sign because the schools are going to be offering vaccinations this fall. And I, I urge you all not to, not to sign these waivers. Uh, educate, get yourself educated, not vaccinated, because um, from, from the research we've done, the vaccines have caused injuries. If you go back to the swine flu of 1976, 46 million people took the, uh, the vaccines. There was a lot of hype, media hype. Of course, the big pharmaceuticals make billions of dollars off these vaccines. Only one person died from the, from the swine flu in 76, yet 25 people died from the vaccine injuries. Hundreds were injured. Billions of dollars, were of uh, over a billion dollars worth of lawsuits were filed. And uh, so now with this S2028 bill, what it's also done is it removes liability for the for the pharmaceutical manufacturers. Uh, anybody that tries to, you know, the health commissioner down to the public health officials that try to implement this this uh, plan, it's it's uh, it's something that we all need to get educated about. If you go to MassLPA.org, you can read about the bill. I urge you to read the bill. Uh, we've been lobbying against this bill since April. We, uh, we've effectively kept it in the House Ways and Means Committee. It's been basically stalled there. What we want to do is, is get you to call your state reps, tell them, look, I, I'm really against forced vaccinations. I'd really like to decide what I put in my own body. I don't want some government agent telling me that I need to take a vaccine. And through further research, you'll find that there's a lot of toxins in these vaccines, very questionable ingredients. You know, uh, you pick up a pack of bubble gum, you actually you get more description of the ingredients in a pack of bubble gum than they're going to give you when you take these vaccines. So it's, it's very important to tell your reps that you uh, are against forced vaccines, you're against S2028, the Pandemic Preparedness Act, and... Uh, more importantly, that uh, when, when your kids come home with these consent forms, just say no to, uh, to these free vaccines they're going to be offering the kids, which from what I understand is uh, they're going to be offering the seasonal flu vaccine at the end of September, and then sometime in November they're going to uh, start the, uh, the swine flu H1N1 vaccination program, which requires not one but two vaccines. And... Uh, the, you know, they haven't tested thoroughly this, this new strain of, uh, of, of virus. They, they say it's, it's a brand new strain of virus, never been seen in the human population before. So they're trying to, rapidly trying to produce a vaccine that uh, they're going to have on the market for this fall. And uh, it's, uh, it's been untested, not, not to mention if they're going to combine it with this seasonal flu vaccine and the in this new H1N1 two-shot vaccine, we can only imagine that uh, the complications that could arise. So uh, I urge you to uh, visit MassLPA.org, read read about the uh, forced vaccines. We, the the website is loaded with information. If you like what we're doing, sign on as a member. You'll get our newsletters, uh, and and even you know if you feel like it's such an important issue that that you can't really get involved with it, but you have some money, you want to donate to our cause because we're, we're aggressively fighting this legislation and trying to educate the public on the dangers of vaccines. So thank you for your time.